So during this time, I was researching immunity. Why was it possible for judges to do, I put you in jail for contempt with no basis whatsoever and have absolutely no responsibility to you at all? And so I was researching immunity and I came across a case called Bowers v. DeVito. I don't have the citation off the top of my head, but it is in the book and it's on the website. And what Bowers v. DeVito showed was that the government had no duty to protect. So I did what anyone would do. Well, let's shepherdize the case. And the shepherdizing, all that means is shepherds is a series of books where they take court cases and they follow them. See if certain points were overturned or if they were modified in some way. Uh, so, and then they also have other cases that cite that case. So let's take, all right, Bowers first veto. That's just got to be the lunatics of D.C. Then uh, what does it have to do with Arizona? What does it have to do with any, you know, anything outside of D.C.? Every single state Supreme Court has said the same thing for 200 years. And the Supreme Court of the United States has too. And any attorney that you'll talk to cannot get through law school without going through the Shaney verse uh, state of Wisconsin. That's where they're weeding you out in law school. Because that particular case, the child was, I believe, killed by the father. There was a protective order and they sued and they said, well, you didn't protect our child. And they said, well, there's no duty to protect your child. And so as an attorney, where you basically, you know, sell your soul, is you have to be able to argue both sides passionately. You have to be a zealous advocate. By zealous, I mean a liar, where you have to take a position you don't believe in. I mean, what other... Oh, I'm going to look into that. What other profession... <laughs> The point being that they had, there was no duty to protect. So when they brought this complaint, it didn't present a case. And it was thrown out. There's actually a case in California on my website. It's the Antioch City case where the California Supreme Court said that police are under absolutely no legal duty to do anything. So I guess the beatings, killings, and rapings are from a moral obligation rather than a legal one. <laughs> That struck me, because here I'm doing all this research about citizens and this and citizens and that, and, and I had known that a citizen is what? Does anyone know what a citizen is? Ian. Uh, an individual with a uh, duty of obligation, to allegiance to the state in return for an obligation of protection. Right. It's a member of the body politic owing a duty of allegiance in return for a duty of protection. So it hit me, if there is no duty to protect anyone, now I just want to address one issue right now, because they'll say, you'll read cases that say this, the duty is not owed to you, Stefan, as an individual, it is owed to you as a group. So when they shoot it down and they try to argue with you all, oh, that doesn't mean anything, that there's no state, that doesn't mean you're not a citizen, it just means there's no duty to protect you as an individual, and the duty is to the whole body of people. Now let's pretend I'm an insurance agent. My duty to insure you <laughs> doesn't go to you as a person, but to everybody. I insure everybody. So you can take your claim and <laughs> shove it with a TSA. So we don't know. So I don't know that that's, that's not legitimate. I mean, that, that's an easy way to explain. You don't need a Supreme Court case. You don't need any legal precedent. The fact that they're saying they insure everybody or that everyone is, is entitled to protection instead of just the one is total BS. That's ridiculous. So just on basic principles of common sense, and my, my, I have a nine-year-old that understands that. So don't buy that. So if you present this information, they give you this nonsense, oh, they're going to hold, don't read the rest of the case, Mark, don't cherry pick. Yes, it does say that in the case, but it's BS. Well, look where it came from. It came from a group of attorneys. So to go through, and I know I've mentioned this before, but it's part of the delusion. There's no duty to protect, which means there's no duty of allegiance to. And if the only thing that makes you a citizen is a duty of allegiance in return for duty of protection, there's no citizens and no body politic, there is no state. And it's really easy to demonstrate that. You didn't get a chance to get that far, in. but if you're in court, and many people who have, who have been to the website and have got the book have gone into court and done this, all you do is you challenge the guy who comes in with the cheap suit, 
saying, I represent the state. Ask him for proof. <laughs> you think it's funny, but I'll tell you right now, the prosecutor doesn't. <laughs> and if you follow the show, you've, had, you've heard people call in, full archives, markstevens.net. You, <laughs> you hear calls, people will call in that have done this. And in almost every case where the judge does not help his little buddy, the prosecutor, the prosecutor has withdrawn the charges. They won't tell you this, but in every stage of a court proceeding, whether it's criminal or civil, the burden of proof on issues is the same throughout. Lujan versus Defenders of Wildlife. There's a lot of cases like that that show that now on the website. Which means, if you're in a civil traffic case, the burden of proof when you show up the first time is by preponderance of evidence. So if they have to prove standing, it's by preponderance of evidence. If you're in a criminal case and you're there to plead and you're asking some questions, the burden of proof is beyond a reasonable doubt. Now, do opinions of a prosecutor count as evidence to prove something beyond a reasonable doubt? No. That's why in my script, it's one of the questions. It's a set of questions. It's one of the more important ones. They ask the judge. Anything this schmuck say admissible? They also know. Everything the prosecutor says is supposed to be backed by evidence. But as we know, not always the case. Not in practice. So, you can imagine, though, how many people wanted to hear there was no such thing as a citizen or state. This really shook people. And it was bad enough when they first realized there was no obligation to pay taxes. Now they hear that they're not citizens. Anyone here still think they're a citizen? I'm looking over here. <laughs> Come on, you can put your hands up.